OK. Do you see the slides now? Yeah, yes, I see, I see. Aggregate okay. demand and aggregate supply. Perfect. Stop. Uh, today, I'm going to give you some information about the aggregate demand and aggregate supply. And then we will go to the Keynesian applications with open and closed economy for the following lessons. But let's go to the aggregate demand and aggregate supply. As you know, my pointer is not working. As you know, aggregate demand uh, and aggregate supply, they are the total amount of the demand in the nation's level activities and total amount of uh, supply in the nation's level activities in the economy. Therefore, we are not questioning in the macroeconomics, we are questioning uh, the aggregate level of demand and supply and its impact to the growth rate and its impact to the economy. Uh, when we are questioning the fluctuations, in the economy, what affects and change the fluctuations and what are the impact to the economy? We are observing these fluctuations are irregular and are unpredictable. And fluctuations in the economy are often called the business cycle. And as you know, the business, business cycle is dependent to the supply and demand curve and its elasticity and its impact to the, its position, I mean, for the, uh, supply and demand, and when we are looking to the aggregate demand and aggregate supply, whether its elasticity is vertical or horizontal or approaching to the, uh, is the direction, will affect the uh, direction of the economy, whether it is moving towards to the economy, to the equilibrium or not, uh, approaching or going away from the economy, uh, from the equilibrium, is becoming eligible in the economy. And fluctuations in the economy are often called the business cycle, as I mentioned, and these fluctuations do not follow regular or easily predictable patterns, which means it is not easily estimated the facts and the impacts to the is, uh, fluctuations, these, uh, let's say, circulations in the economy whether it is moving towards to the economical uh, equilibrium or moving away from the equilibrium, it is not easy. Therefore, in this lecture, we are trying to analyze the impact of the growth rate or the impact of the components of the GDP to the economy. And when we are looking to the short run and long run effects, we are, of course, concentrating first the uh, short run effects of these fluctuations, which is in the in a year uh, affecting and changing most of the variables. And this is uh, probably mostly affected from the inflation. And inflation, as you are understanding, is the amount of the goods and services uh, prices, which is going up and down during this period. If the rise of the general price is realized, we call this inflation, and if it is opposite, we call it deflation. Therefore, if there is an inflation in the economy, we are understanding that these fluctuations is affecting the economy probably in the negative direction because uh, higher prices is always affecting the demand negatively, and when the demand goes down, then we have some economical crisis or economical problems or recessionary periods in the economy as we are currently exercising in our economies where the price is continuously increasing and the inflation rate is not controlled easily because of the, uh, let's say, different uh, factors which is affecting, let's say, the exchange rate, the uh, energy prices, the, let's say, supply side effects and the demand side effects, whether the income is reduced because of this inflation and the uh, exchange rate, which is affecting and depreciating the currency. These are all affecting and changing the welfare and the surplus of the consumers. And results of this 
then of course uh, economy uh, affected negatively. Here on the graphic, we are showing the fluctuation, which is in the real term, as you are observing the real GDP in billions of dollars is uh, estimated, and it is between 1960s to 2000, after the millennium goes to 2005, and shows how this real GDP affects and change the period of time. And as you are observing, the prices continuously going up and this is unfortunately the real GDP is affected sometimes positively, sometimes negatively. These uh, structural uh, small breaks, which is shown to downward, is resulted the recessionary period. And when it is going to the upward positions, it is positively affecting and increasing the GDP, so called the growth rate. The real GDP is the growth rate. And results of this uh, period, we are observing that there is a positive uh, increase uh, between 60s to 2000 in the economies, which is the uh, United States of America's uh, economy is concentrated and illustrated on the graphic. Mm -hmm. the, uh, do you have any question? The three no, no, factors. No. Okay, the three factors. Uh, the three key factors which is uh, affecting the fluctuation, uh, as I mentioned to you, most macroeconomic variables fluctuate together. Because as I have uh, uh, explained you, uh, when the price increase, it is the inflation. When the general price level is increased, this is inflation. And when the rising the prices affecting the uh, inflation and increasing, this will cause negatively uh, impact to the consumer welfare, to the consumer surplus. And when this price is going up and up, the purchasing power of the consumers will decrease the real purchasing power, of course. Purchasing power parity is the real terms. It is not the nominal, but real terms. Purchasing capacity of the consumers, as we are currently exercising in our country, is negatively affected and results of these negativities of course the imported goods is also affected because the price affect the imported goods becomes more expensive and exportable goods will become cheaper to the foreigners because our currency will become decreased and reduced and results of this decrease and reduction in the economy the foreigners enjoy to shop and buy some goods and services from our economies. And most macroeconomic variables that measure some type of income or production fluctuate closely together, as I mentioned to you, mm -hmm. cause some recessionary effects to the economy because since the demand capacity is decreasing, uh, uh, is anything happens, uh, I don't know, is there any problem? Do you have any problem? No, no, no. Because, no, uh, no, okay, no. okay, okay. Okay, then, then the, as I said, uh, the many macroeconomic variables fluctuate together, as I have uh, explained to you. The inflation, the price level, the import, export, the exchange, the expo exchange rate, imported goods and services, uh, exported goods and services, these are all affected balance of economics and balance of payments, uh, everything will be affected. Results of this uh, macroeconomic fluctuation in the uh, market, and this is not good for the economy as we are currently exercising in, in our country, uh, in many emerging economies. This is negatively affecting the welfare and demand will become recessionary period. And results of this, people become poorer than ever. Yes, as we are met in this uh, now current situation. Exactly.
short run economic fluctuation is also shown here. Uh, we are going to step to a little bit more to the other parameters. As I said to you, the components of the GDP is the governmental expenditures, investment, net export, and um, consumption. These are all affected together. And since the consumption is affected, then we are observing that uh, the income is affected. And results of this affection, we are expecting some saving capital is also become affected. And when the saving capital is affected, then the investment will be also affected. And as you observe, we show in the former graphic as you see here, the real GDP is affected because it is almost uh, increasing during this period, but some periods of time it is decreasing the 70s and the 80s. And when we are looking to this, you see 70s and 80s, there is also some yes. decrease on the investment. You see, Taptic. Therefore, this is the indication yes. that this uh, in negativities, as I mentioned to you, is affecting the components of the GDP also, as the investment is also affected and reduced during this period of time, because this is taken from the same uh, period of time. And as you see, it is increasing, actually, because the GDP is increasing almost in the same direction and the same inclination is observed from the real GDP and the, uh, let's say, breaks of this economical crisis or problems is also shown on the investment, which is illustrated in the negative direction in the 70s and 80s and in somehow in the yeah. 80s. Can we say this is serial correlated, uh, positive relationship between this investment and the GDP, real GDP? Is, uh, is this relationship is uh, positively correlated, positively. right? Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you can also present this, you can also use uh, tables to uh, interpret your, uh, uh, let's say, results, isn't it? We are using some tables, we are using some um, uh, graphics, isn't it? When you are also yes. looking this, looking this uh, stationarities, you can also look the correlation graph, isn't it? The correlogram for analyzing yeah. the graphic, isn't it? Therefore, yeah. you can use yes, these yeah. graphical representations for uh, giving some information about the uh, economical conditions in the economy. And uh, the key, three key facts uh, about the economic fluctuations as we are considering uh, the output, when the output falls, it is expected that the unemployment rises because output is the GDP, is the amount of the GDP, which is uh, the produced goods and services in a year, isn't it? And okay. this is negatively affected because of this demand. When the demand is reduced, it is expected that the GDP is decreasing because you don't buy. If you don't buy, the supplier becomes affected and they will not produce anymore. And since they are not exactly. able to export, as in the, as in the let's say, COVID, as in the pandemic period, the supply side uh, is closed. There, there was a, the supply side is uh, put some barriers, the, the transportation closed, the uh, international trade relations stopped, and the output reduced. And results of this, unemployment increased because uh, release from the job places enlarged during this period because you are not able to produce and you are not able to employ people to do for you or work for you. Therefore, these are negatively affecting the whole economy as you are observing. Therefore, aggregate demand, aggregate supply, bilaterally affecting each other and negatively affecting the economic development. And changes in the real GDP are inversely related to the changes in the unemployment rate. As I uh, mentioned, the one is go down, the other one goes up because output falls, unemployment rise, or vice versa. You can say output falls, employment falls, isn't it? Yes. During time yes. of recession, unemployment rise substantially. 
Yes. Uh, here we are also representing the fluctuation of this unemployment. And as you are observing again in the 70s, it is increased the amount of the unemployment, isn't it? In the 80s yes. again increase and 90s again increase. This is, is showing that the uh, GDP when fall down, then the unemployment because it was in the break, uh, break uh, as you observe the former graphs and the investment also similarly bilaterally affected. This is um, uh, parallelly affect and uh, reduce or change the economical effects uh, towards to the other parameters and unemployment is also negatively affected as you are observing on the graphic. And when we are explaining the short run economic fluctuations, most economists believe that the classical theory describes the world in the long run, but not in the short run. Why it is so we will observe uh, if the quantity of money in the economy were to double, price will double the inflation and so will inquiry incomes. You are understanding that. Yes. The quantity of money in the economy were to double, the price going to double because uh, as much as the money, because printing money is not good, it is the inflation, the, re the reason of the inflation as currently Turkish economy exercising such a big uh, inflation because uh, the government continuously printing money. And this is negatively yes. affecting the economical uh, uh, effects and the welfare of the people. And the price going up, as you see, the money goes up, price goes up. Doesn't make sense why you are printing the money. It doesn't help, isn't it? Because it is only increasing the inflation and it is only reducing the value of the economy. And so the income will become reduced and real variables will remain constant. However, these changes will not occur instantaneously. It takes time for prices sorry, and incomes to change. And in the meantime, there can be real effects. And the resource transfer also realized during this period of time when the price is going up and inflation up and the income down. This means there is some reasonable uh, resources transfer from consumers to producers. Therefore, welfare will decrease, producer gain is increased because producer, the entrepreneur, will enjoy this uh, price increase because they are the capitalist approach, they are the capitalist owner, they are holding the capital in their hands, and this is the result of this uh, economical crisis. And this is so-called resource transfer from consumers to producers, yeah. And results of this inflation, we are always understanding the consumers, which means the most of the people, the nations, uh, populations, which is most of the people are not producer, uh, only 10% maybe are the producers or the 20%. Therefore, the most of the people are affected from this uh, economical uh, uh, changes when the inflation goes up and the price goes up and the income goes down, these are all negatively affecting the people's welfare, consumers' welfare, and results of this, people who are holding the, uh, let's say, this uh, produce goods and services and the capital in their own hands, will enjoy these uh, changes because they are becoming appreciated because they are money, so they are produce goods and services become more appreciated, become more expensive, and they are enjoying to get some more uh, resources from the consumers towards to the producers because consumers' welfare continues to reduce, but producer gain or welfare or surplus is continuously increased. And if we are going to represent this on the graph, as you see, if we suppose the economy on the is in the equilibrium, you see the consumer welfare or surplus is in the green area and the producer surplus is in the, uh, let's say, right. pink or right. brown, let's say. Okay. And the price, if the price goes up, this means the producer surplus will enjoy to increase, but the consumer yeah. surplus continuously reduced. And results of these changes, consumer welfare, will become smaller and smaller and smaller. And this is not good as we are exercising. 
This is the poverty of the nations. This will direct to the nations, to the poverty. And we call this is poverty nation. This uh, inflationary or uh, um, the political applications for inflation uh, or the inflationary policy is not good for the whole economy because people's welfare and surplus is becoming smaller, especially for the consumer side. And as you see, it is represented on the graph when the price is going from P to P dash. The increased prices enlarge the producer gain from D, E to D, B, C, E and the other part. As you see, the uh, inverse triangle and the consumer surplus is going to reduce from A, B, C to A. Only the A then is the consumer surplus, which is not good, as I mentioned to you. It is becoming smaller. And the area B is the indication of the amount of the surplus, which is transferred to the producers. And C and E may be the tax and some other things, which is directed to the governments, to the other parties, or the, let's say, debt weight, which is not uh, easily estimated, but mostly the tax. And as much as you are increasing the tax rates, this Q dash will be enlarged and then will become more uh, negatively impact to the government, uh, let's say, resources either. And the model of aggregate demand and aggregate supply, there are two variables are used to develop a model to analyze the short run fluctuations. The economy is output of goods and services measured by the real GDP. The average level of price measured by the CPI or the GDP deflator. So uh, when you are going to analyze the country's uh, welfare or the economy, the performance of the economy or the government's performance, you have to look to the inflation. You have to look to the GDP and you have to look to the, uh, let's say, unemployment rate. These three variables will give you definitely an information about the welfare or the performance of the governments, isn't it? Therefore, yeah. you have to look to the GDP. SPI, sorry. Huh? SPI. Okay. SPI? Yeah. What, what do you mean? CPI? Ah, CPI. Consumer pricing. This is the inflation. This is the inflation. Ah, consumer price. Consumer price inflation. Yes. Consumer price index. Ah, consumer price index. It is the inflation, actually. We call this yeah, okay. inflation. Actually, inflation. And the GDP deflator will then help to correct this as much as possible as we are using it. And the short run production, the short run as it applies to business states that at a certain point in the future, one or more inputs will be fixed while others are variable. And when it re relates to economics, the short run speaks to the idea that an economy behavior will vary based on how much time it has to absorb and react to stimulate. The short run runs counterpart is the long run, which contains no fixed cost because most of the variables supposed to be changing and instead cost balance out with the desired amount of cost available at the lowest possible price. The model of aggregate demand and the aggregate supply is going to be created and economists use the model of aggregate demand and aggregate supply to explain the short-term fluctuations in economic activity around its long-run trend. And when we are looking to the graph here, as you see, the business cycle is not very, very popular and very uh, straight. It is stagnating and going up and down because the seasonal deviation and yearly changes is affecting and directing the economical activities, sometimes to downward, sometimes to the upward positions. But if it is, the inclination is always to the upward position. And when you take this uh, line, the straight line, and observing that it is going up, this means the economy is doing well. At, at least it is improving and enlarging the economical activities, results of this, uh, let's say, uh, increase in the long run. The model of aggregate demand and aggregate supply, when we are looking to the aggregate demand curve, which shows the quantity of goods and services 
that household firms and the government want to buy at each price level. And the aggregate supply curve shows the quantity of goods and services that firms choose to produce and sell at each price level. So the aggregate demand and aggregate supply is almost as similar as it is in the demand and supply, but now here the aggregate level, which means the nation's level demand and uh, supply is uh, concentrated to the uh, table, to the economy. And when you are looking to the graph, as you are observing similarly, we have here the quantity, which we call this real GDP. We are going to replace it for the aggregate demand, the GDP. And for the price, we are going to change it as an inflation because the, in the demand and normal graph in the microeconomics that you are observing, the demand and supply is represented with the price changes and the quantity produced goods and services. But in the aggregate demand and supply, it is then the real GDP supposed to be produced goods and services in a year and the price level representing the inflation. So called as much as the price goes up, it is the general price level, which is the inflation. And the equilibrium level, which is shown on the graph, is the uh, nation's level equilibrium, which is supposed to be uh, realized at point PE and the equilibrium at point Y, where the aggregate supply and aggregate demand curve is becoming to the equilibrium position. We go to the aggregate demand. And we will then start to learn this uh, Keynesian model, the aggregate uh, expenditure model. But I think uh, we don't have to go through to this. I will let it here because since you are alone and I don't know how many students will come to the class, I don't want to go further to a little bit more accelerate and enlarge the things to the Keynesian model, to the uh, expenditure output model. I will prefer to stop here because you know I think this y is equal to c plus i plus m g plus n, n, n x. If you remember from the former classes, if you don't, then I will memorize you, and then we will start to develop our models regarding to these uh, GDP components and explaining this aggregate demand with these parameters and aggregate supply together, and we will then shows you how it is, what is the impact and the affection of the economy results of these uh, changes when the aggregate demand curve shifted to the up or down or the aggregate supply curve shifted up and down and what factors affecting and changing these uh, curves will be introduced to you uh, with these, uh, let's say, uh, uh, represented uh, components of the GDP, uh, so-called the uh, output expenditure model of the Keynesian economics. I prefer to stop here because I don't want to go through to these uh, because this will then becomes a little bit more uh, comprehensive and I prefer to stop here. Then next lecture, I will wait to the other students. If they come, if they don't, then I will start from here and go through to finish this chapter. OK, OK, and okay as you know, okay. the aggregate demand, uh, you know, the C, I, G and X is uh, known by yourself, I think, you know, the uh, things. But I will then uh, introduce you with a little bit comprehensive and will more uh, detailed uh, explanation will be given to you. OK, for today, uh, I will stop here and then okay, wait to see uh, what will happen next week. OK, this was the okay. start, let's say our first lesson and the next lecture we will go through to the next part. OK, OK, Ojam. thank you very much. Ojam. You're welcome, Taptik. Thank you for you joining my class. I am really appreciating. You are the one, my hardworking student. I hope Thank you will well. do you will do better this semester, and I will definitely support you. As you know, last semester it was not uh, uh, deliberately done, uh, but you are really very hardworking. I know you are a dedicated student. And I hope uh, you will do and you will uh, create more uh, competitive uh, papers and support me with this um, lecture for your understanding and knowledge. OK, Taptik. Okay. OK, of okay, course, then. thank you. Then. Thank OK, you. then see Bye. you then next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.